What's up, everybody? This is Raw with a Kerbal Space Program video. Yep, surprise, surprise. This is the only game I ever make uh, videos about, so anyway. And today I have a weird little contraption here, as you might have noticed. Some of you might have already guessed what it is. It is a hydrofoil. So very important is to retract the wheel so that it sits lower in the water. The way this thing works is as follows. Any of you guys who have tried to make boats and other things like that in Kerbal Space Program know that water is kind of harsh. The, the collision mesh on the surface breaks anything moving any faster than like, you know, 20 meters per second. It creates a lot of friction and pulls things to the side. That splashing gets going and it kills you. It's just not easy to work with. So, what I thought about was something like this. This is a hydrofoil. I was wondering how the collision mesh would react to actually having something riding under the surface instead of on top of it. And uh, to my surprise, very well. Because apparently the collision mesh ignores the structural components and uh, the canards and the landing gear underwater hold up the ship up. So you can get going pretty fast. I'm already going well over you know, 130 miles an hour or whatever. And uh, you could actually still sort of control this thing. You have to do so carefully. You really don't want to splash like that too much. The other thing you don't want to do is take off. Because if you take off, landing is impossible in the water. So, sort of ticks and tricks about this. Make sure to retract the landing gear so that it sits lower. Make sure to put two canards side by side someplace so that you can um, turn without it rolling over on you. The first one I made was like a bicycle design and I really couldn't steer it. Tons of control wheels, of course. And the last trick is to make sure that the front canard set is lower than the ones in the back. That's because the engine is, is off center and pushing down. And if you have them perfectly flat, it nose dives forward and kill you. But with this, you can make watercraft, probably big and heavy ones too, that just kind of like skim the surface like this and just work as watercraft. So that's my tip and trick for the day. The other thing I wanted to talk about in this video was download links. So all of my designs that I've showcased in pretty much all the videos I've made since the very get-go are very simple. That's why I focus more on the technique than the actual design. You know, nothing new in the technique of this plane. But what I wanted to see is I wanted to see if anybody was interested in me uploading any of my planes and making videos about how to fly them. Here are some of the planes that I'd like to show you guys. This is the Blue Shark Mark 1, named after my uh, nephew. His Pee Wee soccer team is called the Blue Sharks, but anyway. So this is a very easy to control, very easy to hover, very easy to fly SSTO VTOL. So it hovers really well and is very, very easy to control. So some of the design features this has that I haven't incorporated in many other planes before are, well, the uh, intakes I did a little bit different. It still has eight intakes per one pusher engine, which is very easy to get in the space if we need to. But I also, instead of my normal trick of putting all of the intakes on three and all but two on four, so that I could be more efficient with the drag, um, f uh, action group four shuts down the back six and action group three just shuts down and turns on the front two. Which gives me very good control to be able to choke and restart the engine. The reason why it responds so, so much better is because if you see the actual air pool is lower because only two intakes are working instead of trying to turn on and off all eight, which would create a lot of, of lag in the actual choking of the engines. See how much longer it takes to drop? So by just toggling two on and off, we get it very good instant drop to instant power back. And of course, because it's me, I'm not only able to drop on command, but I can also raise it on command with my little control jets. That and the fact that it has control wheels and has a pretty sturdy design in of itself make it very easy to fly around. It's very easy to to, to hover it. It's very easy to maneuver it and drive it from wherever you want. 
So as a VTOL and as a hovering plane, it's, it's really, really easy to fly. As a plane, it's also very maneuverable. I like the way this thing flies. has a lot of control for surfaces on the top and it's not that big or heavy even though it does have quite a bit of fuel you can pretty much drive this wherever you want you can throw it around the, the VAB, it, it maneuvers very well now as far as its VTOL capabilities these engines have a little better specific impulse and vacuum than the orange ones so for long burns like when you're taking it to Minmus or whatever you'll find its efficiency is pretty good and since it's very light it's easy to land I've taken this one to Minmus and back made it easily so it's a good little sort of any job capable SSTO VTOL so I'll, I can um, set up a download link for this one as well as a more detailed video as to how to fly it and what all the action groups do and whatnot. So comment below. The other one I have is uh, if you guys remember the video that I made about the SST about the SSTO VTOL, the one that I took to Minmus, that I cut the video as soon as I made it to Minmus. I sort of redid that one. It's got a lot of the basic design elements with one major difference I'd say. This is not a minor difference, this is a pretty major difference. This one instead of having some side mounted orange engines it has a single nuke and has a lot more lift for the control rockets. This one hovers well and flies well as well. Um, it also has the internal landing gear which is a little trick I like to use. This one can easily land on the moon or Minmus and come back. This one's very efficient, has a lot of range. Uh, with this design, I was able to take off, go to the moon, land on the moon, take off from the moon, go to Minmus, land on Minmus, come back, circularize on orbit, control a descent, and land again. Has uh, good lights to see the ground as you're landing on, you know, places like the moon. So I could upload a download link for this one with an instruction on how to fly it. The other plane that I uh, also was thinking maybe I could do an up uh, a download link for is the new and improved or perfected the Gunstar. This is the non-air hogging STO I took to the moon and back. Building it in the VAB made it easier to um, to balance it if that makes any sense. This one still gets into space very easily with the triple engine design. Um, the the landing is still pretty easy. The return is a little easier to survive now because I have the um, six parachutes instead of four. And as you might notice, it also has an escape pod, so we're not going to get nobody killed. So in the comments down below, let me know if you want me to upload, put up, put that, put up, you know, up download links for any of these with um, better instructions on how to fly them. Till then, this is Ross signing off, and uh, again, thank you very much for everybody who's watched, subscribed, liked. Um, shout out to Veos, Fatal Morality, and Cruz and AK. Watching you guys is educational and we're, we're part of where I get a lot of my ideas. So thank you very much, and have a good one.